Hello and welcome to Educo Motivation. In this video, you'll learn all about the Law of Divine Oneness, one of the 12 laws of the universe and the first in our series. You'll discover the mind-boggling connections you have to the universe and why everything you think, say and do matters beyond belief. So let's get started. The Law of Divine Oneness, one of the Twelve Laws of the Universe, decrees that we are all connected, we are all one. The word universe itself reveals this fact. Uni is the Latin for one. Universe comes from the Latin word universus, which translates as combined into one. Individually and collectively, we are inseparable from the universe. If you pitched yourself on the moon and gazed back at the earth, you'd see a beautiful blue marble suspended there in space and time. And as you'd stand there enraptured by her beauty, you'd be struck by a stunning realization. Everyone that has ever existed, every person you know and love, living and dead, everything you use every day is enveloped within this one globular object hanging before your eyes. So from a physical perspective, we are deeply connected to the Earth. Yet the Earth is connected to the Sun, the Moon and the rest of the planets in our solar system through gravitational energy. This ensures all the planets travel on dependable orbits around our star. Furthermore, we are so in tune with the vibration of our planet that its momentum doesn't phase us. The Earth spins on its axis at over 1087 miles per hour and hurtles around the Sun at an incredible 67,000 miles per hour. Yet we go on about our daily lives, completely oblivious to the incredible speeds we are moving at. Yet this physical oneness we have with our planet is just one dimension of our connectedness. Many of the elements that make up the human body originated at the core of distant stars. Our most accomplished scientists have proven such elements can only come into existence through nuclear fusion and the forces required are so immense it could only happen through reactions within stars. So every atom of oxygen in your lungs, carbon in your muscles, calcium in your bones, iron in your blood was created inside a distant star before the Earth ever came to be. A star of intermediate size propels these elements into space through stellar winds, whereas massive stars seed distant worlds with these elements through supernova explosions. So you and I and everyone else are as mighty as the stars twinkling in the sky because we are at one with these celestial bodies. We are them and they are us. So from a molecular perspective, everything and everyone within this universe is comprised of the same building blocks. Yet things get even more interesting at the quantum level. By quantum I mean the smallest possible unit we have for measuring something. So a quantum of light is a photon and a quantum of electricity is an electron. With that in mind, consider this. Everything in reality is an illusion. It might look like a solid object, but at the quantum level, it's a different story. In effect, everything is made of energy. Put any object in this physical world under an electron microscope, and you won't see a solid mass. You'll see spaced electrons moving at incomprehensible speeds. Everything from the most massive star to a human hand to a garden rock is comprised of pure energy. In this regard, everything in the universe, irrespective of shape, size or elements used, can be broken down into its smallest possible constituent part, energy. Everything is nothing but energy at the quantum level. Everyone knows that science and theology are in perpetual disagreement on most matters, yet consider one definition they agree on. Scientists say, energy is the cause and effect of itself. It cannot be created nor destroyed. It is evenly present in all places at all times. Theologians say, God is the cause and effect of himself. He cannot be created nor destroyed. He is evenly present in all places at all times. 
So by definition, they are describing the same thing, but choosing to give it a different label, namely God versus energy. You choose which label sits right with you, but understand this, they are one and the same thing. Now it might be difficult for you to consider yourself as nothing but a mass of energy at a high speed of vibration, yet that's exactly what you are. Incredibly, technology has advanced to the point that we can photograph our body's energy field. In fact, the technology isn't even new. It was invented in 1939 by a Russian engineer called Simeon Kurlian when he captured human energy fields with magnetic plates. These techniques reveal the body to be a glowing, shimmering mass of vibrant energy waves. This is not pseudoscience, this is scientific fact. You are a glowing mass of energy and Kurlian photography proves it so. Now this energy is more than a light show. In fact, scientists from Dupont have calculated that the atoms and electrons making up your body contain a potential energy of more than 11 million kilowatt hours per pound. This means there is enough potential energy within your body to power the entire North American continent for almost a week. This energy you have locked up inside is immense, and yet it is the same energy that is common to everything and everyone. It permeates and penetrates the entire cosmos. It connects you with everyone and everything at the quantum level. In effect, we are connected to everyone and everything on this planet and in this universe. We are all part of a collective consciousness. We are all part of the same creative power. Every single atom inside of you is connected in some way, shape or form to the rest of the universe you move through. This means that everything we do has a ripple effect and impacts the collective, not just ourselves. Always remember that your actions both matter and make a difference. Realize every little thing affects every little thing. You are far more powerful than you give yourself credit for. It's easy to comprehend this with a simple example. Have you ever been in a room and felt the energy shift? Perhaps someone famous walked in and the atmosphere got charged with excitable energy. Or perhaps an argument ensued and the energy polarized to a negative frequency. Whatever the case, the dominant energy in the room instantly impacts your energy and the energy of everyone else, for better or for worse. As humans, we have a sixth sense. It's a feeling we get or a gut instinct. We can feel the energy in a room and instinctively know whether it's good, bad or indifferent so too can everyone else in that room. It has been said that your energy introduces you before you even speak. People get a vibe. They tune into your vibrational frequency and they know what you're about. What you need to realize is this. The dominant energy in your environment influences your energy. It affects how you feel. If you have a positive mental attitude, your energy vibrates at a higher frequency. Let's say you visit an old friend, someone whose company you used to enjoy, but for whatever reason, you've fallen out of touch. And for whatever reason, things haven't been going well in his life. In fact, he may have become extremely negative and capitulated to his circumstances. You might even find his energy to be repulsive. You're operating at opposite ends of the spectrum. He is vibrating at the lower frequencies, you're vibrating at the higher frequencies, and if you're not careful, your energy will attune to his frequency. In this context, you leave his house feeling much worse than when you first arrive. In fact, you may well feel drained by the experience. In this regard, mindfulness is essential. You need to be aware at all times. You need to realize what you are saying, thinking, believing and doing is affecting everyone else just like a ripple effect. And the reverse is also true. It is because we are all part of this collective consciousness. We are all one. This idea is taken further with the concept of the hive mind or collective mind. Our focus needs to be on setting higher vibrational frequencies in perpetuity. When you operate at these uppermost frequencies, when you express love, gratitude, peace, serenity and happiness, you transfer positive vibes directly to the hive mind. 
I think this is what James Allen meant when he said, Calmness of mind is one of the beautiful jewels of wisdom. It is the result of long and patient effort in self-control. Its presence is an indication of ripened experience and of a more than ordinary knowledge of the laws and operations of thought. Of course, the reverse is also true. If your inner world is dominated by pain, regret, sadness, anger, hatred, jealousy or fear, that is what you are feeding to the collective, which will bring down others and negatively impact the hive mind. Meditation, affirmations, journaling, practicing gratitude and positive self-talk are all wonderful ways to reprogram your mind and tune into these higher frequencies. Global events too create seismic shifts in human consciousness. By virtue of our connectedness, events like 9-11, COVID-19, the war in Ukraine and even the climate crisis are creating palpable changes in the way we see the world. COVID-19 fundamentally altered our priorities. Humanity realized that materialism was overrated, that health, family and a sense of purpose were vastly more important. This perpetuated mass resignations globally as people searched for more meaningful work. Suddenly, it wasn't enough to earn good money. One had to have a sense of meaningful fulfillment from their work. COVID heralded a new era of hybrid work where better work-life balance was attained through working from home, either part-time or full-time. These shifts in consciousness were not local. They ricocheted all over the world. Further evidence that we move in lockstep with each other. We are all part of the implicit order. We are all one. The fact we are all connected suggests that the way we treat others is the way we treat ourselves. Therein lies the origin of the maxim, treat thy neighbor as thyself. So always try to send love, harmony and gratitude out to the world and everyone in it. This ensures you operate at the highest frequencies on the spectrum. Now this isn't always easy. You need to operate from this frequency irrespective of the people you encounter. It's difficult to continue showing compassion to people that are not reciprocating in kind. Yet to maintain an exquisite vibration, to continue to attract a life of ever greater abundance, this is what you need to do. It really is all about reciprocity. When you commit to operating at a higher frequency, you channel positive energy and infuse the collective consciousness with positive vibes. Operating with a sense of oneness shifts the energy all around you because we are all affected by each other's frequencies. Whatever you put out, you will get back. Always be cognizant of the fact your words and actions directly affect others. Never miss an opportunity to show appreciation and gratitude to another person. Kind words and gestures instantly shift the energy of another. Once you positively impact the energy of another person, you've created a ripple effect. They feel better, they operate at higher frequencies, and they will pass this positive energy onto others. In turn, you will feel better, you added to the world, and it didn't cost you anything more than a few words or a simple gesture. So we are not just connected in terms of our physical composition, but in terms of our mental and spiritual disposition. We've all received moments of inspiration from a higher source that have turned out to be the very best course of action for us to follow. Put differently, it has been stated that prayer is when you talk to God. Intuition is when God talks back. You can call it God, you can call it energy, the universe or, in this instance, Newton's third law. But when you put an intention out to the universe, when you ask a question, the universe must revert. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. There is a reason why those that trust their gut instinct seldom make the wrong decision. A remarkable example of inspiration, connectedness and divine oneness is invention. Inventions come directly through inspiration. They originate from source energy and materialize through our creative power. Yet not one of us has exclusivity over this domain. There is a collective consciousness that can tap into divine inspiration. Consider the fact that breakthrough inventions were simultaneously created by different people in different places at or about the same time. 
electricity, the telephone and the airplane are three such examples. Patents filed at or about the same time in geographically dispersed regions in an era predating sophisticated communication channels are a stunning revelation indeed. It is as if infinite intelligence is broadcasting these ideas through the implicit order and inventors such as Nikola Tesla, Alexander Graham Bell and the Wright brothers are merely tuning into the frequency and downloading the blueprints. A remarkable theory suggests that thought waves penetrate all time and space and enable us to connect directly with those that have gone before us. This in effect is the basis upon which theologians believe in the power of prayer and scientists believe in the concept of thought transference. Now many people find the spiritual energy difficult to accept and that is absolutely fine. This is one of the gifts we have in that we have the freedom to choose what we believe to be possible or otherwise. Interestingly, it has been demonstrated that direct mind-to-mind -mind connection is also possible. I refer specifically to telepathy. Telepathy is defined as the purported transmission of information from one person to another without using any of our known sensory channels or physical interaction. Consider the case of Dr. Edgar Mitchell, who was the lunar module pilot on Apollo 14, which launched on January 31, 1971. Mitchell was fascinated by the idea of consciousness. During the Apollo 14 mission, Mitchell conducted his own experiments on extrasensory perception, also known as thought transference. While the other astronauts, Shepard and command module pilot Stuart Rosa, were sleeping, Mitchell experimented with mind reading. He concentrated on pre-arranged symbols while four contacts back on Earth attempted to guess what he was thinking about. Approximately a quarter of the guesses were correct. Given the infinite possibilities of thought, this was a remarkable result. The experiments changed his life. In an interview with People magazine three years later, Mitchell said, and I quote, It was euphoric, one of those rare moments in life when you seem to be able to reach out and touch the universe, when you had an intuitive flash about the real meaning of truth. Many dismiss telepathy as pseudoscience, yet it has been scientifically proven that plants respond to human thought energy. This is discussed in our next episode on the Law of Vibration, perhaps the most exciting of the 12 laws of the universe. And if a plant can pick up our thoughts, then it's logical to assume another human being is even better equipped to do so. Interestingly, technology is accelerating the power of connectedness. With the proliferation of the internet, social media, mobile telephony and satellite technology, we have reached a level of connection that was once thought impossible. In effect, any one person today can project an idea into the minds of millions of people around this world through Facebook, YouTube, Twitter or any one of the other global networks at the click of a button. In fact, we all possess the power to contact anyone else on this planet through the ubiquity of mobile telephony. It's incredible to think that the average smartphone today has more processing power than the computers that put the first man on the moon. These old computers were the size of buildings, yet today we possess infinitely greater power in a micro device we each carry in our pockets. Such an ability just 100 years ago would have been considered godlike. In effect, this proliferation of information and communication technology is amplifying the effects of our thoughts, feelings and actions on other people. It is thus imperative now more than ever before that we are mindful of what we think, say and do. Everything right down to the smallest action has an effect on everything else. You toss a stone into a pond and its ripples immediately change the surrounding environment. I'm sure you've heard of the butterfly effect. It refers to the phenomenon whereby a minute, localized change in a complex system can have large effects elsewhere. When you realize that everything you say, do, believe and think has a ripple effect, you tend to become consciously aware of the incredible power you possess in the fabric of space and time. When you really begin to appreciate your direct connection to infinite intelligence, you begin to understand that anything is possible for you. So realize this, you do not exist in splendid isolation. 
Everything you do, say, think, believe and feel has an impact on those around you and vice versa. This awareness gives you the tools to continuously fine-tune your frequency of vibration, to contribute positivity to the hive mind and to live with greater abundance. Be sure to click the next video on your screen right now. This features the next law in our series, the law of vibration. This is a primary law and it is the real secret behind the law of attraction. It is perhaps the most exciting law of the entire series. Keep up to date with our latest videos by hitting subscribe and turning on notifications. Please show your support by clicking like.